Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at the latest Alpine Linux. This will be version 3.18, which came out last week. Alpine Linux is a distro that's designed to be small, simple, and secure. Those are the three tenets of why it was developed and why it exists. Alpine uses BusyBox and Musil instead of the GNU Utilities and the glibc. Alpine uses uh, also uses OpenRC. It does not use SystemD. These replacement tools provide a very fast and a lightweight and a nimble experience for people that are using it. So what do we need to run it? I mean, it, what are the requirements? Memory, you need at least 100 megabyte of RAM, and that would be for a basic uh, text-only desktop. If you want a desktop environment, that's gonna be about the same as it is for any other uh, desktop environment, which will take about a gigabyte of memory to do it. Disk is about 700 megabytes of space, for sys and data modes, but we'll take a look and see today what it's going to require because we're going to put a desktop environment. I'm going to pick the largest one that I can, which will be GNOME, in order to show what the maximum amount of space that you should reserve for this, both memory and disk. Alpine Linux is available for both 32 and 64-bit CPUs. They support AMD, Intel, ARM, PowerPC, I don't know if there's any others coming, like perhaps, I don't know if if uh, RISC-V is in the mix for them or not down the road. I just I have no idea. They recommend two gig of memory uh, or more uh, and four gig of disk space or more. They also recommend 1024 by 768 screen resolution. Of course, that would be if you're installing a desktop. It uses the Linux kernel 6.1. And if you're wondering, well, why didn't they go with two? It was 6.2. Well, 6.1 is the most current long-term support. And in the past, you'll probably realize that Alpine Linux has always gone with the uh, long-term support releases of the kernel. Some of the changes in Alpine Linux version 3.18, it's not a huge update. It's, it's not, um, but it does have some pretty important features. For example, there is an experimental headless installer that's using TinyCloud. All you have to do to enable it is if a volume is found with a label that says CI data uh, during the boot process, the network will be configured, a user called Alpine will be added, and also the SSH keys uh, can be provided to that install via metadata. Alpine Linux 3.18, uh, the toolchain updates are as follows. Go is 1.20, LLVM is version 16, Python is bumped from 3.10 to 3.11, Ruby 3.2, Rust is 1.69, GNOME, of course, is 44, and KDE Plasma is 5.27. I don't think XFCE has changed uh, since the last release and last June of uh, 2022. Let's do a, let's go and install it and see what's involved with it. I have booted up on the ISO for Alpine 3.18. So I've logged in as root, there is no password. So I'm gonna do a setup Alpine, which is the instructions are right there <laughs> on the page. And so, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. First thing it's gonna ask me about is what keyboard am I using, a US? And then it says, okay, great, what's US? And I'm just gonna say, a generic US. And so it'll set that up. I'm gonna give it um, a default name. And, and then it asks me which uh, ethernet device do I wanna initialize? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and set it for DHCP. Do I want any, any manual network config? Nope, don't need nothing like that. And then we'll give a root password. My time zone, gonna choose UTC for this. And I don't have a proxy, so we don't need that. And then it'll give me a list of servers that I can use to uh, to get my packages from. And so there's, I think there's a, 
Yeah, there's a detect and add fastest mirror from the above list. So it'll take a while to do that, but I know one is probably the one that's going to come out first for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose one. Uh, then do you want to set up a user? Uh, you do that by just giving it the username. Don't answer yes unless that's the name of the, that will be the name of your user. Uh, full name and then the password. If I have a SSH key I want to insert, I can do that now. I don't. It's asking me for which which open SSH server do I want. Well, open SSH is fine. Where do I want to install it? SDA. If you click, if you hit enter, uh, it, yeah, it's not going to install it at all. Uh, so there is, if you're not sure on this one, which... How uh, how would you like to use it? There's Sys Data Crypt LVM, so we'll just list them here. It'll give you a description of all of those. Sys is a traditional. I want to put it on disk, and I want to run it from disk, and I want to persist my data to disk. There's other options if you all you want to do is just uh, use the data disk for storage, but you but you want to run from memory. You can do that as well. So yeah, I'm just going to type in sys. And then it's going to say, which one? Uh, you're going to install this to SDA. Is that correct? And do you want to erase it? Because your last time for that, I said yes. And there goes the installation right there. And it's done. So at this point, I can just reboot. This reminds me so much of the early Linux, the way it used to boot. Uh, yeah, it was just very, it was real clean. There's very few things that it did. Just got you up and running. All right, so I'm going to log in with my user ID. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to install a desktop, and you can't do that for root. First thing, uh, let's make sure. Now, first of all, if I do this, sudo is not found. In the last release, I told you that they were replacing sudo with do as. Well, it's it's replaced. You, I think you can still install it, but I mean, do as is supposed to be better. It's supposed to be more secure. So we'll 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 try it. It's going to be hard for me to to. I'll probably put in sudo during the course of this demo because I'm so used to using it. So anyway, I'm going to try my best to use this. Let's, uh, APK is the name of the package manager, and we're going to do an update. Give it a password. And then we're going to do an upgrade. And we're done. Do as, we're going to do setup desktop. And it, once I give it my password, it should ask me for what, okay, what do you want? Well, I want GNOME. So let's just, now the first time I ran this, let's just see if it does. Yeah, okay, so there was some problems here uh, during the run. First of all, GDM doesn't exist and the C login D does not exist either. So something happened on the install. Let's try it again. Let's run it again and see what we get. Okay, so yeah, this is taking a lot longer. There's a lot more stuff going on here. Now we should have a flip. The first two, it, there should be, yeah, two that fail and two that succeed. So do I have a running system at this point? I think so. Let's see if Network Manager will actually come up because it failed on me the first time and I did not, I didn't try this. So I'm just going to see if I can shortcut it. All right. Now this is going to be running Wayland by default. If you don't want that, choose one of those, one of these, the classic or the normal one Xorg or if you, KDE or XF. No thanks. Let's see. No, we didn't get it. So there definitely is a problem here. Can't yeah, so it's not installing it. Okay, that looks good. Mm 
let me find my That looks a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> might as well, might as well get my usual ones here too. Okay. I think it's just Hey, look at this. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. So it even picked up everything. So, yeah, all right. So we've solved that problem. Um, the next thing I want to do is... The, the I have a problem with this. <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's all right. Well, if I go to glances, that green and white, it just wipes it out can find let me see if I can find one ah that's a good one right there okay it should have put that get rid of the, the we'll get rid of the gnome for one too all right so let me get rid of that so let's go look at the terminal i think that's where yeah that's right here so you can you can change you'll see it to whatever it is you want i think this one the last one is the one i want you can also set things like how much of a, a buffer you want along the edges too so instead of having the, the letters crammed right up against it like that, you can you can fix that. All right, so memory, we have about 25% in use, 994 meg, uh, and that includes the app caches. We do have a really large swap file. It's taken, you know, it's, it's mapping my full memory. Probably won't need that. Uh, and I'm, it's got about 1% overhead, even when running GNOME. So this is, we're, when we're all done, 6128-2, 766 packages installed. That's about half, I think about half of what uh, a normal x86, one of, the big, one of the big distros normally take. So this is still a lot smaller uh, and more compact. Also, um, this is norm 44.1. So uh, as far as disk space is concerned, we're using about 1.6 gig, as you can see right there for this. And uh, well, there is a boot partition, but that's like 30 meg. So that's all there is to installing it. If there, last time I did this, it was a clean install. There wasn't any problems with things being left over. So I, that's just a minor bug. I'm sure that it'll be fixed soon. Um, Alpine Linux uh, 3.18, like I said, it's not a huge update, but there are some significant features in it. Uh, there, of course, it has tooling updates, so you'll be on the latest and greatest packages that you can use. Uh, as you saw during the installation, I did run into an issue actually two with install and GNOME. As far as the text-based install, everything went fine. 
Thank you to all my Patreons and listed here and also members of the YouTube channel. Uh, your support keeps this going. Anyway, that's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Hope to see you in the next one. <laughs>